we're going live! Hi everyone! Welcome to the Kelly Kitchen. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. Hello Vic, how are you? You guys, Christmas is done and we are on to New Year's. I hope you are all well and we have got some really great stuff tonight. Um, I have to apologize first because none of these recipes are actually on my website because you need to realize that I don't put those on there until they have absolutely perfected them. And we are making keto chocolate ice cream and I think I have perfected it, but we're gonna make it here tonight so you guys can see how I do it. We're also gonna be making um, keto cheeseburger soup, which is amazing. Um, but I wanted to make it one more time before I put that up on the um, up on the website. And then we're gonna um, see one of my Christmas gifts I got. So I have held off on getting an air fryer um, just because I just don't have a place for it. And um, hi, Atsuko. So I don't have a place for an air fryer. I mean, it's like this big thing and I, didn't, I don't have any counter space for it. But uh, the love of my life, Peter, bought me an air fryer lid. It's just a lid and it goes on top of my Instant Pot. So we're gonna make some green beans, some air fryer green beans tonight. And we are gonna get started with our, um, our keto chocolate ice cream. So downside is that you need to have an ice cream maker to, uh, to make this keto ice cream. It's chocolate ice cream and it is Finally, a scoopable ice cream. Um, and so you have to have an, uh, a, an ice cream maker to make this. Um, but the good news is, is that ice cream makers are only about 70 bucks. And it is one thing that I use over and over, um, especially in the summertime. But I'm working on some recipes right now. So far in my freezer, I've got <laughs> vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. So tonight we are making chocolate. I have one and a half cups of heavy cream here going in my um, in my stock pot. And I'm going to add to this. This is what makes your ice cream scoopable. So like I said last week, in my keto caramel, there is no substitute for allulose in this recipe. So allulose works really well in ice keto ice cream because it keeps it scoopable. But I cut in, so it's a 50% uh, erythritol and 50% allulose. So it's a third cup and a third cup of each of those. And I'm gonna pour those right into my heavy cream. And really the only reason that we are heating the um, sweeteners is so that they dissolve um, in our heavy cream. And then we're gonna add just a third of a cup of just regular old Hershey's um, chocolate. And so um, it's just a powdered unsweetened chocolate. We're gonna add that in there. And the heating it all together um, melts it all and it, it um, combines it all. It makes it sort of a smooth, um, it makes it a sort of a smooth uh, consistency. We are going to add three egg yolks to this, and I'm going to teach you the fancy thing, which is you temper them so that you don't get scrambled eggs. Um, it's not as hard as, as it might seem. I just see a, a question coming up here now. Someone asked where you get the air fryer attachment for the Instant Pot. I'm going to, so he, he just got it off uh, Amazon, and if you just Google search, air fryer lid attachment. Um, it should come up pretty easily. Um, and I needed to do like a, a little tutorial this weekend. So I made a few things the, the green beans were actually the easiest. I'm not sure if I totally love it yet, but um, this week we'll be making some chicken wings in the air fryer and we'll see kind of how that goes. 
Um, so while that is, is heating up and kind of coming together, I'll come and say hi to some people. Hi, Christy from, and where's uh, Christy Birch? I don't know where you're from, but good to see you. Oh, and yes, my fun um, cousin, Dave Gossman, loves seeing you. Excellent, yes, of course. Um, so this is the Instant Pot uh, air fryer lid. And it does a bunch of different things, um, broil, bake, roast. I don't even know how to do everything yet, but the air fryer is super easy. This thing weighs about 13 pounds, 15, mm, 10 to 15 pounds. Let's just call it that. And it has this funny plug on it because the thing about using this on top of the Instant Pot is you cannot plug your Instant Pot in when you're using this. Oh, look it, there's my friends. Hi, Kim, how are you? Good to see everybody, Merry Christmas. Um, so this goes into the wall so that you can't plug anything else in. And, um, and so we'll, I'll, I'm gonna show you how that works. Turn my, my uh, chocolate mixture down. I got it on low now. This is really nicely um, mixed together. So here's the thing that kind of seems fancy, but it's not super, super hard to do. We are going to what we call temper the egg. So I turned the heat off on the chocolate. It is really, really, really hot right now. And I have three egg yolks here just with a whisk. And this is, um, you have to sort of be multitasking because you gotta whisk while you're drizzling in a little bit of the chocolate mixture. And then you're gonna bring the eggs up to temperature um, so that they don't scramble, but then you're also um, going to heat them just enough before we put them back into the chocolate. Okay, so do you see how I'm whisking this? And I have a ladle full of my, cho my hot chocolate mixture and I'm just gonna drizzle it in just the tiniest amount because I do not want, do not want scrambled eggs in my chocolate. But the egg yolks, and this also cooks the eggs, so you um, don't have to worry about salmonella. But the idea of bringing the eggs uh, up to temperature and then we're gonna mix them back into our chocolate mixture is because they bring a creaminess, like a, uh, like a custard. Now, mind you, I am not an expert on making ice cream. I'm, sir, I'm just trying uh, these things out so that I can bring you guys some keto-friendly things. And so far, this recipe has worked. So I've got my eggs going in there. Uh, and those are nice and uh, they're getting nice and it's getting like a nice thick thing. I'm gonna turn the heat on to a low because I want those to keep cooking just a little bit because they're gonna thicken up, okay? So, hi Kentucky. Oh, it's Amy from Kentucky. Hi, how are you? Um, so we've got our, our eggs and our chocolate are cooking together and the uh, mixture is getting nice it's getting thick, but I am gonna add just a little bit. I've got um, three quarters of a cup of almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. And I'm gonna mix that in there and I'm gonna keep stirring so that this, this mixture continues to get thick. Now, the other pan in the neck, this is worth it by the way, but the other pan in the neck about ice making your homemade ice cream is that you, you melt all these things together and then you bring them to room temperature and you chill them for three hours. And then we put it in an ice cream maker for 20 minutes and then we freeze it overnight. So it seems like a lot of work, but it really is um, worth it because the ice cream is really delicious and it's scoopable and it, it's creamy and it satisfies that flavor. One of the other things you're gonna add to this recipe is xanthan gum. This is just a container that I um, that I keep it in. But xanthan gum is it's just a, a way to 
So, wait, hold on a second. Somebody just asked if I could use coconut milk instead of cream. You absolutely can use the full fat canned coconut milk. Um, you can use that instead of the, the cream um, if you want to make this dairy free. Oh, and there's Brenda from Missouri. Nice to see you. Okay, so I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. And this is also used very widely in um, the food industry as a stabilizer. And it's um, just derived from, from vegetable fibers. And it's the way that it's sort of fermented that it comes together. So one of the way, so now we have this all sort of mixed together and because why not add more chocolate? Another way that brings creaminess and a rich chocolatey flavor is that we add one ounce of unsweetened, unsweetened baker's chocolate. Now my stove, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm just gonna put my chocolate right inside my, um, my chocolate mixture here. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes and it'll, it'll melt on its own. I don't have to, don't have to do anything for that. As soon as, so I've been very busy. <clears throat> I already made one of these earlier today. It's been chilling in my refrigerator for the last three or four hours. I'm gonna pull it out here in a second. We're gonna get it into the ice cream maker. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla to that one. And we're gonna get that into the ice cream maker and we're gonna let that do its thing um, so that you guys can see how it all comes together. Um, okay, so we'll get that out of the way. And that's out of the way. And this, my friends, this is what the chilled chocolate ice cream looks like. Do you see how it's got a nice thickness to it? It's been chilled for probably like three or four hours. And now we're gonna put it into the ice cream maker. Now, the reason that you can't just freeze it just like this, I mean, you could, but what happens is that you get these ice crystals. Um, and that's not unique to keto. That is with all ice cream. And that's why ice cream is made in those ice cream makers. And it's the way that it chills it slowly so that the ice crystals don't form real big. So I have my, the base, oh, it's cold. this is the base of my ice cream maker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my ice cream in here and then I can't do this all on camera. So I'm gonna put this into the um, ice cream maker. And if I can turn the camera that way, I will and I'll show you. But we're gonna pour our chilled ice cream right into the base of our ice cream maker. It is super, super cold. The base is, you can see the frost just from coming out of the, um, just from coming out of the freezer. So there we have it inside our base. Oh, can you see that? It's kind of smoking. So we're gonna put that inside our ice cream maker and we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. And then at the end of 20 minutes, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It'll be the consistency of like soft serve, which you can eat it then as soft serve chocolate ice cream, but then we're gonna transfer it into another bowl so that we can freeze it over night. And then a little bit later, I'll show you what the frozen scoopable um, ice cream looks like. And I'll even give you a sneak peek. So this is gonna go into the, um, the refrigerator and I'll make that tomorrow. Okay, one thing as I'm sitting here talking to you, can you just freeze it? So Rhonda just asked if you could just freeze that in the freezer just as it is and not put it in the ice cream maker. You can, but it will form ice crystals. So it'll be a little bit uh, icy and less creamy. So that's why you need an ice cream maker. There are no churn recipes or recipes that you don't have to use an ice cream maker. But I haven't found one that I like yet. So 
I don't really want to share any of those yet. There's a lot of keto, no churn ice creams on the internet, but I really haven't found one that I like. So I'm not going to suggest those yet. As I'm talking to you, I realize that I forgot to put in just a splash of vanilla into the um, ice cream. So I, the chocolate ice cream. This is so. Vanilla um, has a little bit of alcohol in it, and this also, um, some keto recipes call for a teaspoon of vodka or a tablespoon of vodka to cut the iciness. Um, I don't necessarily want to be feeding my children uh, vodka or anybody else that doesn't want to have vodka in. It's so minor. However, some people really just can't have that. So the vanilla, actually a true, really good quality vanilla will have a little bit of, um, of alcohol in it. So um, I'm, it's a, the ingredients are vanilla bean extract in water and alcohol. So it's so minor, but that's what really good quality um, vanilla extract. So I'm just gonna put a splash, like a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna put it right inside my ice cream maker. If you have coffee extract, that actually will give it a, a nice punch of chocolate flavor. I know it sounds, weird to add coffee to your chocolate, but you don't actually taste the, the coffee. Okay, we are gonna get started on our cheeseburger soup. Let's see, is this better for you? Let's see, we'll do it from right here. Okay, I hope everybody had a great holiday. I was under the weather like two weeks ago, and then last week I was just a little off my game, but I feel like I've got a skip in my step. The new year is right around the corner. And while this is heating up, um, we had a winner last week and I've got one more book to give away. This is my low carb and intermittent fasting workbook. Um, say hello down below and say something like happy new year. And I'm going to enter you all, anybody that says that, I'll enter you into a drawing and you will get a copy of my book. If you don't get a copy and you want a copy, it is available on Amazon um, or you can get a digital version from my website. Um, they're both for sale there. I wanted to show you what it looks like. So I filled mine out today. Why start and, why start and wait until the first? We're starting today. So I've already filled in what my week's meals are going to be. And then today was my simple daily plan. So shoot me a happy new year down below and, and maybe where you're from. And we're going to send one of these out to, to you guys so that um, you guys can get started on your keto low carb journey too. Okay. Cheeseburger soup. Here we go. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Oh, and Sandy, everybody got it. So great to see everybody. Okay, so I have got a thick stock pot. Um, I'm going to use two pounds of ground beef. I like a really chunky type of soup, and um, but if you wanted more of a brocky soup, um, or if you had less people to feed, just use one pound of the ground beef but we like a really a really um a really thick chunky hearty soup so um you don't have to use two pounds if you don't want you can just use one so i'm a huge fan of cheeseburgers and i have um this is now my third or fourth cheeseburger style recipe i have a cheeseburger casserole that recipe is on the website. I have a, um, I have a cheeseburger um, salad, and now I have cheeseburger soup. And um, so, yeah, we're gonna get this recipe for you guys. But I just wanted to show you how I make it first. Um, I have my trusty, trusty masher. Ooh, the ice cream. Very exciting. Okay, we're gonna mash up, and this is another thing, I like to do it all in one pot. We have enough dishes to wash around here, so if we can do it all in one pot, 
and save some time, save Peter some time on dishwashing, um, then I always try to do that. Okay, let's see. So um, is it Nita? Nita asked if I have a cookbook. So I'm so glad you asked because I've been working on a cookbook for about 18 months and I have gotten stalled a little bit here or there, but I just re-engaged my designer and my tech guy and we are restarting the cookbook project and I'm hoping to have it done in the first quarter of 2021. I figured 2020 is kind of a wash. Let's get started in 2021. So yes, I ha do have a cookbook coming um, and it's going to have probably 60 to 80 recipes in it. And so keep an eye out for it. I'm sure I'll be talking about it a lot. All right, guys, I got two pounds of ground beef going and, I'm, and I've got it on high right now because I'm going to get it going super hot as soon as it's about three quarters of the way cooked um, you, um <laughs> so nita said she would love to buy a cookbook oh i would love if you bought one i think that would be so lovely and i would i would be so thankful if you did that um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cook the ground beef i'm going to do it like almost till it's fully brown and then i don't want to take it out so i'm just going to push the ground beef to the side and I'm going to take some of that extra grease out of there. I'm not against grease. However, the more grease that you have in there, the um, sort of the, the the texture of the soup gets to be um, just a little bit too fatty or a little too heavy. And because we're adding cream and we're adding cheese and um, a bunch of other stuff, you really don't need that extra fat. Our beef is coming together. I must have used a leaner beef because this beef is not that um, fatty. So there you go. I don't need to take any. If you do use a fattier beef, do yourself a favor and um, just take a little bit of the grease out of the pan before you get started with the next thing. Some people also add bacon um, before they do the beef. Um, I just, you know, I didn't feel the need to add any more. You could crumble it on top if you wanted to. Um, so I got my ground beef in there. I pushed it to the side so that I have just a little bit of room. And quite frankly, now I do see some, um, some of the fat kind of accumulating. So I'm just going to pull some of the fat out. I just don't want to have too much liquid going in there. So I'll just pull it off and, and set it off to the side. Because I'm going to start cooking my, my onions and softening those on the side, right? Okay, so we got those out of there. Now, I... I'm going to keep my ground beef off to the side. I've got one large onion. Onions do have carbs, so if you want to cut your carbs even a little bit more, use half. Use half the amount of onions. So we're going to get those in there where those are going to start to soften up. Um, I may have made a mistake wearing this sweater. I was freezing today because it's been pouring rain which we were okay with because we needed it in California, but now I'm like sweating my brains out. Um, it's okay, I'll, it, it's a second workout for me today. Um, so we're gonna just soften up with those onions. I've got a little bit of garlic, I've got some tomato paste, and I've got some softened cream cheese. Now, if you're gonna cut the beef in half, you're gonna to wanna to cut the, the cream cheese in half as well. So right now we have two pounds of ground beef and eight ounces of cream cheese. Um, so if you are gonna cut this in half, you do uh, four ounces, just a half of the cream cheese log. Um, okay, while this is softening up, for anybody that just joined us or for anybody that is watching a replay, 
I'm giving away a copy of my low carbon intermittent fasting 21 day workbook. I have to say that I wrote this book almost, I don't know, maybe six or eight months ago. And I use this and I love it because every single day I have my simple daily plan and I just have a game plan for my day. And this is available on amazon.com. But if you say happy new year below, and tell me where you're from. I'm going to do a drawing and somebody will get this book in the mail in the next couple of days. Um, so our onions and our ground beef are softening up and nice and brown. I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. I'm going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Tomato paste also has carbs in it. If you wanted to lessen the carbs a little bit more, you could omit those. There are about four carbs in that two tablespoons that I just put in there. This soup will serve 10 servings. So four carbs doesn't seem like a whole lot, but all of the carbs add up. So keep that all in mind. Okie dokie. Already choky. Okay, I'm going to put in a, my cube of softened cream cheese and the reason I do this now before I add the liquid is because I don't want it to be I want it to get nice and creamy inside the meat I don't want it to get um, lumpy in the soup which sometimes happens so we'll just put that right in there I don't want to miss any of that delicious cream cheese on that and then I'm just going to stir that around mash that in If you guys have some air fryer recipes that you really love, I would love it if you could drop some suggestions down below because I'm kind of new to this air fryer thing and I, I'm going to do chicken wings tomorrow. I did Brussels sprouts. I did cauliflower. We're going to do green beans tonight, but it would be really great if I had some really wonderful, fun ideas to sort of get busy with right okay so i've got my my cream cheese is all mixed inside of there i'm going to add a can of drained um tomatoes this is a large can again if you're cutting this recipe in half use a smaller can um, i chopped those up i drained them of the extra juice put that there give this a nice stir so these are all the flavors that you would normally have in a cheeseburger. The only thing you're missing is the bun. And I don't know about you, but the meat and the cheese is usually the best part for me. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of mustard. This is two teaspoons of mustard that we're going to add. I'm just eyeballing it. And we're going to add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Um, so there's one, two. Again, if you want to cut down on the carbs, do half of this. Um, and then we're going to do um, a half a cup of dill pickles. We'll just put that right on top. There we go. Give it a nice stir so all the flavors are fully combined. Oh my god, this is so good. Um, then, kitty cats, we are going to add four cups of beef stock. I'm just going to give this a little stir. I like to use better than bouillon because I don't typically have beef stock. Um, I don't typically make beef stock and I like better than bouillon. I think it's a, a good quality-ish. I think it tastes great. And so there is our soup. We've got it on high. We're going to bring it to a boil. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to taste it just so I can see if I need any salt. I don't think I will, but you never know, right? Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to get a good picture of this for you guys. Oh my God. It tastes like cheeseburger on a spoon. I love it. Mm. Wow. So good. Ow. 
Yikes. Okay, so we're gonna bring that to a boil. As soon as that comes to a boil, um, we're gonna add the cheese and the cream, um, and then we're gonna just let it simmer for, for a teensy, teensy, tiny bit. While that is doing that, if you could see the ice cream, it's so, so cool. Let's get busy on our green beans, our air fryer green beans. Okay, like I said, this is the lid. He just got it off of Amazon. He, I think he Googled uh, air fryer lid attachment instant pot. And this came up, I think it was $50, maybe $70, but um, this is the attachment. Do not plug your instant pot in. You only plug the lid in, okay? So let's move this a little bit closer. So our, so I can't, I don't know if you can see this, but I can't plug anything else in over here. Here's my Instant Pot, just like I normally have it. This is the metal insert that comes with the Instant Pot. We're gonna keep that in there. This comes with the air fryer lid. It is a, a metal tin insert with this trivet, and then this thing that actually makes it so you have two levels um, of, of um, so that you can have air circulating in here and it'll get them nice and crispy. So we'll put that there. Let me just give my soup a little stir. Oh, so delicious. Okay, so the soup is starting to boil. I'm gonna add um, two cups of cheddar cheese. And we're just gonna stir that in there. There's our cheeseburger. So amazing and delicious. Okay, so that cheese will melt. We're gonna turn the heat. Um, we've got a nice boil going here. So we're gonna turn the heat down. We're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let that simmer while we're doing all this other sort of stuff. I have, I just got a little bit of green beans just so we could see what this looks like. Um, so this is like 12 ounces of, of green beans. I'm gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. This is probably mm, a tablespoon of olive oil. Give it a little toss. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely adore everything but the bagel seasoning. Who is that? Oh, hi, Pamela from Minnesota. Nice and cold there. Oh, and there's Megan Smith. Hi, Megan. Um, so I love to use everything but the bagel seasoning. You can get it at Trader Joe's, you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at pretty much anywhere now, but I just sprinkle it on here because it's it's got um, sesame seeds, it's got garlic, um, it's got salt, it's got a little bit of pepper. So this is probably two teaspoons that I just drizzled on there, and I'm gonna give it a little, a little shake rattle and roll okay so my first layer my first layer of my green beans i'm going to put them right on put half of these right on the bottom i guess the idea with an air fryer is that you need the air flow so there's the bottom layer now i'm going to put my this little guy on there's a, a little place for it to sit right in the middle oh there's our ice cream, yay! Okay, let's get this going and then I'll get the ice cream off of the, out of that thing. Okay, so there's our green beans with all that yummy flavor. Before I turn this on, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So can you see, I've got two levels. That's the top level. And then I have another level underneath here of, um, of more green beans. Again, my Instant Pot is not turned on, it's not plugged in, only the lid is plugged in. And I'm just gonna take that, and I'm just gonna let it sit right on top there. It does a little locking, but it's not locked because halfway through, we're gonna take the lid off, shake it a little bit so that we can get it browned on all sides. So we're gonna push air fry, and I've got it at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. We really like to zap our green beans, 
Most recipes um, for air fryer green beans call for only five minutes. Um, call for only five minutes, but we found that we like 10 minutes because halfway in between, I will shake them up. And I've got a lot of gadgets going on in here tonight. The only thing I don't have going is the oven. Can you believe it? Crazy. Okay, so let's take a look at our ice cream. Oh, so fantastic. Okay, remember I said that this is gonna be a little bit like soft serve ice cream. So I'll show you what the consistency looks like. And then, hi Susan, how are you? And then we're gonna put this in the freezer overnight and I'll show you what the scoopable stuff looks like. So soft serve ice cream, it's, it's starting to freeze. Mm. You could eat it just like that. It's kind of like um, like chocolate pudding. It's delicious. Okay, I'm gonna put that into, I'll put that in a container. Actually, let's do that now. I should have been more prepared. Okay, so, ah! I'm making a huge mess tonight, but don't worry. It all gets cleaned up very, very quickly. Okay, so there is our ice cream. I'm gonna take my spatula. I'm gonna put it right here so you guys can see what that looks like. I'm gonna get that into our container. I can't look at you or else I'm gonna spill this all over. So uh, I don't even know if you guys can see this. Yes, I think you can. So our ice cream is gonna go into the freezer and this will freeze overnight and give us a delicious scoopable ice cream. And guess what? Just because I love all you guys, I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the freezer. So delicious and amazing. So here is my chocolate ice cream. So you can see it's it's um, it's hard, but it is scoopable. Before I do that, let me just say this one more time because I love you guys. Um, I'm doing a giveaway. This is my intermittent fasting and low carb. 21 day jump start. I know we're getting ready for the new year. You don't have to wait until then. It is available on um, Amazon or on my website, but I'm giving one away. So say happy new year down below and tell me where you're from and say something funny or I don't even know, but um, I'll do a drawing. And this has just an every single day way to follow keto, low carb, lots of tips and tricks. Um, this is mine that I decided to fill out. Actually, that one was mine. So I can show you what this looks like. So I this is my, my meal plan for this entire week. It's just a general meal plan. If I don't follow it completely, then it's not a big deal. And here is my daily plan for today. So I'm giving one of those away. And so if you're interested, say Happy New Year down below. Yay. Okay, so, oh, I was gonna show you the screen. I made you wait. Okay, so here is our scoopable keto ice cream. And I'm gonna show you the vanilla also. So there, my friends, is our scoopable chocolate ice cream. And then I'm gonna show you also another one that I'm working on. This is the vanilla. And the fun ingredient that I use for this is um, vanilla protein powder. Um, just a little bit gives goes a long way. And here is our vanilla. That's Peter's dessert tonight. There you go. There is our, our vanilla and our chocolate ice cream. I'll put these back into the freezer and then we are going to finish 
our um, cheeseburger soup and our, our air fryer green beans are coming together beautifully. Okay, so those are done. Our cheeseburger soup has been simmering here for a few minutes. We've got three more minutes on our air fryer green beans. At this time, I'm just gonna clean some of this up here. Um, I used way too much, way too many utensils tonight. So here's our cheeseburger soup. Our cheese is, is starting to melt in there and it's um, thick and beautiful. And then I touch it off with just a half a cup of heavy cream. Again, you do not have to use this, but if you want it to be even creamier and even more delicious, then um, definitely, you know, just a splash. This is a half a cup. You don't have to use it, but I like to add a little. It gives it a really nice creaminess, makes it super rich. Um, and we will give that a nice stir. Let's take a taste. What do you think? We'll get a nice little, we'll get a little bowl here. Ooh, it's very hearty. I love those pickles in there. Got nice, nice amount of ground beef. Beautifully hard, hearty soup. On top of your cheeseburger soup, tons of little add-ons. You could add on, um, I'm sorry, I just got distracted. One of my friends from high school growing up just made a very funny comment. Chapin, you do not need a cigarette after watching this. <laughs> Stay healthy, don't, don't have those cigarettes. Um, but if you want some cheeseburger soup, come on over. Um, so we have cheeseburger soup. You can add um, chopped red onions on top. You can um, sprinkle a little bit more cheese. You can even do a little dollop of sour cream on top. Um, we're gonna have this tonight with our with our air fryer green beans. Let's just give it a little taste. It's pretty hot. Mm. Okay, I promise this recipe <clears throat> is going up on the website tomorrow. So perfect and delicious especially for this rainy Southern California day. My boyfriend was saying it feels like Canada, like in the high 40s today. So anyways, cheeseburger soup. Do you see that pickle right there on top? Mm. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Cheeseburger soup, delicious. Okay, you can't see this, but the top of my air fryer says five minutes. So we've already gone five minutes. And we are just going to, where's my oven? Uh, we're going to toss our green beans just a little bit so that they, um, so that they brown on all sides. Usually it'll be halfway through and I think it'll be probably like at four minutes. So I'm just going to wait like 30 more seconds. Okay. Well, that's while I'm waiting for that. Don't forget I'm doing a giveaway. Don't wait until the first to get started. Keto and low carb. You do not need to uh, have a, another four or five days of a carb fest. Get started now. And if you want to win that book, just put Happy New Year down below and tell me where you're from. And I'm going to do a drawing. So, oh, it's at four minutes. So we're just going to um, see what this looks like. Okay, so basically you just do a little turn. And I don't know if you can hear. But my, my pot, my little pot is doing a little sizzle. So we're just going to shake those up a little bit and then we're going to let those go for four more minutes. We're going to just put this right back on top. Do you see how it's a little bit different than the actual instant pot because you can take the lid on and off without worry that you're going to blow up the kitchen or something, right? Um, 
Our soup is done. Our ice cream, I showed you how that all came together. Um, let me know your favorite air fryer recipes or ideas because we're gonna start trying some stuff out. Someone's just asked a question. Oh, Lori says it's rainy and 40 in Canada, so it's the same. We, I've got a Canadian in the house and he says it feels like Canada here. So someone just asked, do I do meal plans for low carb or just recipes? So I have a philosophy about this. Um, I can't tell you what to eat. I can give you ideas, um, but everyone is a little bit different. So it just told me to, to change my, to turn my food a little bit, because I have three more minutes, but I already did that. So it's three more minutes. So I don't do specific meal plans. Um, I do accountability coaching. So I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, and every single day we decide what you're going to eat. If you want to learn more about my accountability coaching program, um, you will get one of these books. You check in with me every morning and every night, and I hold your hand through learning how to do keto, low carb, and intermittent fasting. But I will not tell you what to eat because everybody has a different palate. Everybody has a different budget. Everybody has a different number of people in their homes. So right now I have somebody that doesn't eat any pork. And then I have another person that has little children that are carb addicts that will not, that refuse to eat any sort of meat and they will only eat carbs. Um, and then I have a lot of, you know, I have a few single gals that are in my program. So I don't specifically do meal plans. Um, I don't find them useful. Anytime I have ever given anybody a meal plan, and by the way, when you do my program, I'll give you a sample two-week meal plan, or actually it's a three-week meal plan. I will give you a sample of what you should eat, um, but things change every single day, and sometimes something will be on sale at the supermarket, and sometimes you don't feel like eating chicken for dinner. You want to have tacos instead. So... I can't tell you what to eat. You're going to decide what to eat. Um, and if you wanted to be part of my accountability program, I would walk you through that. If you wanted to just follow along in this book, I give you my staple meals that I have. I give you a sample of what my sample meal plan is. It's already done for you in here, but you need to sort of decide. If you don't eat eggs, it wouldn't make sense for me to give you a meal plan. So I hope that makes sense. So if you are interested in the, um, the coaching in the accountability program, just go to my website and at the top, there's, a, there's a, uh, an option to pick where it talks about coaching. So just click there, check it out. Um, there is a reward part of the accountability program. Um, if you do everything that you're supposed to do on a keto and low carb and intermittent fasting, you get half your money back. So that has been one of the really great points about my accountability program is that if you do all the things that you set out you're to do and it's not hard stuff, um, then you get half your money back. There's no drinking, sorry, in that three weeks. Um, someone just asked what, uh, what else I was cooking um, in my air fryer. You're going to find out right now because it is done. So in my air fryer, I made super easy um, green beans, air fryer green beans that I just sprinkled with a little bit of everything but the bagel seasoning. And in 10 minutes, my um, vegetable is done. And you don't have to wash the Instant Pot because none of the Instant Pot got dirty, just the basket for the green beans. There, my friends. Ah! Those are my air fryer green beans with everything but the bagel. You guys, it was another fun night in the Kelly kitchen. I hope you guys had fun. Um, 
shoot me emails or give me some suggestions or just say hi. <laughs> I love seeing everybody, love seeing where everybody's from and tell me where you are in your journey and what you might need help with. Um, this has been another great evening. I can't wait to dive into this cheeseburger soup. I'm gonna have some ice cream later and I love seeing you. So next week, 6.15 and uh, I'll see you here on the Kelly Kitchen. Bye, you guys.